Today we got something we think you're going to find really special. There's three reasons to watch today's video. First, I'm going to smoke a corned beef on this pit barrel cooker, and we're going to finish it with a molasses and Irish whiskey glaze. Second, what we're going to do is we're going to make some cabbage. You know, can't have cabbage without corned beef for uh, St. Patty's Day. Now, we've made beer can cabbage in the past. We've made sriracha cabbage in the uh, past that we smoked. Today, we're making southern fried cabbage. I'm telling you, it's awesome. And the third reason you need to watch today is I'm going to give away this Holy Cow Meat Church barbecue rub. So you've got to watch the video to know how you can enter to win this. Now I've got one of these corned beefs you can pick up at any grocery store. Uh, this one's three and a half pounds. Comes, you know, with the little uh, pack of seasonings. You can just get rid of that. And what I've done is just trim this guy up a little bit. He had a little fat on the back. I am going to use a binder today. Just a little mustard. You could use um, olive oil if you wanted, or Sang's oil, whatever you like. Okay. And again, you don't need a lot. I mean, probably using uh, two teaspoons max. Okay. And for the seasoning today, I'm using this Holy Cow Meat Church. Um, I really like this one. Looking forward to see how it is on this corned beef. I am going to put a fairly uh, heavy layer because I do want to get some bark on this guy. You know, we just want to do the sides. Um, and, I mean, the, just want to make sure we get it good and coated. Okay, so um, we are going to hang this guy in the pit barrel today. Got him all seasoned up here. All right. And then um, what I've got in the pit barrels, I do got a few chunks of this mesquite today. We're just going to hang this guy in here, get the lid on it, and then I'll check on it in probably an hour and a half, two hours. Now we want a little liquid for this uh, corned beef brisket. I've got a cup of beef broth here. And then what we've got here, in the spirit of uh, the Irish, is some Jameson's. And we're going to put about a quarter of a cup, maybe a little bit more. It's probably closer to a third. And then what I've got here are some molasses. We're going to add about a quarter cup of molasses. Okay. Then I've got some brown sugar, about a third of a cup. And then if I can get it out of this mustard, I'm going to get two tablespoons of brown mustard. That one's about done. I think we're pretty close. All right, so let me just get this all mixed up together. And then uh, I'll show you how we're going to wrap this brisket. It's been two hours and 45 minutes. You can see we're up to 169.9, might as well say 170. You could have taken this out at 165, but I'm going to take it out now. It was just busy. It's not going to hurt a thing. And we're going to wrap this guy. So I've just got a foil pan here, right? Um, get that hook out. Now we're going to pour that Jameson whiskey and um, the beef broth down in here. Now we're just going to wrap this guy, seal it up with this foil. Okay. Fairly tightly. And uh, I'm going to get the uh, rack set in that pit barrel cooker, and then we'll put this back in on the rack. Let's just get our brisket in here. And I'm going to continue cooking this guy until it comes on up to around 200. It might go a couple more, it might go a couple less, just depends how tender it is. Okay, I'm actually quite shocked. You can see your temperature is at 214, and I only let this go one hour. So this is three hours, 45 minutes. Cooked way faster than I thought it would. Let me get this off of here, and let's check a couple other places. Let's make sure I didn't have a bad reading, or you know I wasn't touching something I wasn't supposed to be touching. You can see here, 204, 206. This thing is plenty done, okay? So what I'm gonna do now 
is pour this juice, well, we'll move this juice over to a saucepan and let's get it thickened up. So I'm going to pour this juice in here. We're going to bring it up to a boil and simmer it to thicken it, to thicken it. And then I'm going to glaze this brisket once it's thickened up. Okay. So we pretty much got all the juice in there. Let me get the foil back over just to kind of cover this guy up. And we'll get this glaze going. Okay, it's thickened up quite a bit. Now, I'm going to turn this heat off. All right. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It smells absolutely awesome. Now let me get this out of the way. Okay, I'm going to bring that brisket back. Or that corned beef, whatever you want to call it. Smoked corned beef brisket. Now, I'm just going to paint some of that glaze on here, right? Look at that. I'm telling you this is going to be awesome. I know our temperature got up there a little bit. Um, you know, usually I would have my uh, digital remote thermometer probe inserted. But I went camping last weekend, took that with me. And I, I still don't know how, but I got the thermometer but lost the probe. So I'm going to have to call the manufacturer and see if I can buy a new probe, or if not, you know, I need to buy a new remote. Now I'll just take, I've got a little bit left. I hope you can see that. What we'll do with that is use it as a dipping sauce. Now I'm just going to cover this back up. We've still got to make that cabbage, right? It's a little bit of a surprise. It just got done so well. So I'm just going to sit this back on the pit barrel cooker and let that sauce caramelize for about 10 minutes while we're making this cabbage. Now I started here with a whole head of cabbage that I've just chopped up into large chunks. And what I'm going to do is just get this all chopped up. Um, and when I get it all chopped up, I'll show you how we're going to actually put this cabbage dish together. What I've got in here, I fried uh, 12 ounces, 12 ounce pack of bacon. Okay, that's bacon uh, grease. Okay, this is that cabbage. Okay. Now, I'm not going to use this whole head. You can see it's just going to be too much for this pot. There's only going to be two of us eating this anyway. So, you know, you can use a bigger pot. And you can uh, make the whole head if you want. All right? So we're just going to fry this up a bit till it gets soft, soft. And then I'll show you how we'll start adding the other goodies in here. In about three minutes, the cabbage is starting to soften up a little. Now, let me show you what I've got here. I've got uh, two jalapenos diced up, one yellow onion, two teaspoons of minced garlic, two teaspoons of salt, teaspoon of pepper, teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Let's add all these goodies in there. Oh, damn, this smells good. Okay. Now, if you go looking for southern fried cabbage recipes, a lot of folks add sugar. I got this thing about sugar and vegetables. I'm not too crazy about it. And we added sugar to that glaze for the corned beef. So I'm definitely not going to put any sugar in this fried cabbage. Now, the next thing we're going to add, and I've decided even though many of you viewers have tried to help me, I can't say this word, I'm going to add some Lee and Perens. How about that? I can say that. We'll add... Uh, I don't know. How about a few dashes? Stuff makes everything better, right? And like I say, this whole uh, duration shouldn't take more than, say, 10 minutes, 15. It really depends, you know, if you like your cabbage real soft or if you want it crunchier. You know, we don't care. For real soggy vegetables, I don't care if it's asparagus or green beans or whatever, we tend to leave them more on the crunchy side because we just don't, nobody here in our house likes soggy veggies. All right. Next thing I'm going to add, as I told you, I fried up 12 ounces of bacon. There it is. All chopped up. Well, not all of it. Does this happen to you guys? As I was frying it, you know, you can only fry so many pieces at a time. I ate 
two or three pieces. So anyway, it's almost a 12 ounce package of bacon. I'm telling you, I'm starting to think I could eat this just by itself. Look at that. Huh? All right. I'm going to let this go two, three more minutes tops. Then we're going to pull that brisket out, or that corned beef, whatever you want to call it. Corned beef brisket, how about we call it that? We're going to slice things up. We're going to try this slaw, and we'll try that corned beef brisket. Now, if you want a chance to win this rub today, just leave me a comment down below. You can tell me how much you hated this video, tell me how much you liked it, tell us something you want to see. All you have to do is leave a comment, and we're going to do a random comment winner. Now, I hope you'll also subscribe so you'll make sure to always know about these upcoming giveaways. And hey, you might find a recipe you like that we do. All right, our brisket has been sitting here out of the foil for about, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, of corned beef brisket. The best I can tell, the grain's kind of running that way. I didn't mark it, so um, we'll soon find out. But we're just going to cut up a few slices. Then I'm going to show you what it looks like. Let me get this out of the way before I make a mess, like I always do. We're going to bring that uh, southern fried cabbage into the pitcher and see how this all tastes. Okay, that'll give you an idea what it looks like. Ouch. Still plenty hot. That nice corned beef pink color, right? Oh yeah, yummy, yummy, yummy. I'm gonna get some of that southern fried cabbage here. Oh, I'm telling you, looking good. You know this is gonna make awesome sandwiches. All right, let's give this a try, okay? I'm tired and sitting down, hope that doesn't offend anyone. Look at that, it's got a beautiful, beautiful bar. That glaze we put on it, I'm sure, Helped with that. Let me just get a smaller bite, otherwise I'll be chewing forever. Okay. And what I'm going to do is add a little bit of that southern fried cabbage to it as well. We're going to give this a try. <laughs> it's freaking incredible. <laughs> um, you know, it, it didn't hurt at all that we went over on the temperature. It's juicy. Um, I, I don't know if you can see that. It falls apart pretty fairly easily. Has a little bit of texture to it, but it's tender. Oh my gosh. And let's talk about this cabbage. You know, I'm not a big cabbage guy, but um, you know, we've made the beer can cabbage and we've made the sriracha smoked cabbage, which are awesome. I could eat this on burgers. I could eat it on deli sandwiches. And let me tell you what I especially like about this cabbage. It's got a little bit of spice to it. Um, if you recall, I told you we put two jalapeno peppers in it. I'm sorry, I'm making a mess. Um, wow. You, uh, 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 you know, I, I made it. Sure, he's going to say it's good. No, you're right. <laughs> um, it, it is really, really delicious. I really don't care if anyone else in this family eats any of this or not. This... Um, this corned beef, smoked corned beef, it's got this, the, the nice corned beef flavor, it's got a little bit of smoke to it, and it does at the very, very back end have just a slight sweetness um, from that whiskey and the brown sugar. I'm telling you, this is a great recipe. Hey, um, if you've got any questions or comments about this recipe, please just leave them down below. Sorry, I got to stop over my hands. Uh, in the comment section. Um, if you're not a subscriber already, I hope you hit that icon up in the corner. It'll get you subscribed so you can see all of our uh, upcoming videos. Thanks again for watching. We really, really appreciate it. And uh, hey, uh, happy St. Patty's Day to you.